In this exercise, I'm going to cover how to work with stitch files. Stitch files are files of type DST, XXX, EXP, these types of files. A stitch file contains no outlines, so you can't affect the outline data, like underlay, things like that. A lot of the designs that you get from other digitizers that you're going to need to edit are going to be in these formats. This is just a very basic logo that we see pretty much every day. As you can see, in this logo, the digitizer did not trim between the individual letters. Also, I want to not have this name. I want to cut this name out and put in a different name. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to show you how to clean up a DST stitch file. If you look in the object list, you'll see you have a lot of data, individual jump codes, things like that, that aren't really necessary for this design to sew properly. They were necessary to generate certain kinds of codes. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to rebuild this design anyway. So I want to take all this junk data, as I call it, out. So first thing I do normally is I click Design, Optimize and I simply say to clean up the jump stitches. Click OK, and you'll see that most of the junk data has been eliminated automatically. Personally, I don't like the standalone trim codes. The reason being is that I don't really know if there are tie stitches with these. Hopefully, the digitizer put ties in. Maybe they did, maybe they didn't. I don't want to take that chance. So I'm going to click on these stitch codes, hold down the control key. This allows you to select more than one object. And I'm going to simply delete them. OK, now my object list is a lot more manageable. And as you can see, depending upon the distance between the individual blocks, the system reinserted the thread cuts and the ties like I would see in block data. To me, this is a lot more manageable object list. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to select the word Ballin. As you can see, and this is very common, the digitizer did not trim between the last color of the design and the B in Ballin. So what I end up with is if I try to select Ballin, I get part of the design before it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to split these two parts apart. We're going to zoom in very tight here so we can see what we're doing. And then we're going to activate Stitch Edit. Take your mouse and simply click anywhere in the design. Preferably, you'd like to get somewhere close to where you're going to want to do this split. I click left. My mouse picks up the stitch. And then I right mouse click to release my mouse. Using the arrow keys on the keyboard, I can go forward or backwards through the design. I'm going to find the first stitch in the B, right there. This is where I'm going to split these two things apart. Using the split stitches to blocks, I'm going to click. And as you can see, ball one is one block and the other part of the design, the outline, is another. Now, when I select ball one, I only get ball one. Use the same method to add thread trims. You can split the individual letters apart, stitch edit, click here, go forward, split it, split it, and split it. And then let's get this one and split that. Now you see I have the letters A, L, A, and D. And if I want, click and drag through select mode, right click, edit connection, trim always. Now you can see how you can select individual stitches and split blocks apart. But what if you want to select a whole group of stitches? Well, we can do that too. Let's say, for instance, I wanted to select P, A, and Y. But I wanted to leave COM. In Stitch Edit, go to Select Stitches Mode. 
click and drag a box around that which you want and only that gets selected. Rotate it, resize it, do whatever you like with it. If the shape is irregular, from the Select Stitches mode, click your right mouse button and select Polygon Select. This will allow you to draw a shape around what you want to select. And that covers the basics of stitch editing with the CompuCon EOS program.